This mask came out of the mold with a poor cosmetic finish and also some areas that are very sharp due to splinters from the forged carbon fiber not being pressed adequately against the sides of the mold. A quick fix for this is to use partially cured epoxy to fill in the gaps and also to give the entire surface a nice cosmetic finish. For this, I'm using a deep set epoxy that would normally be used for river tables. In this case, it's about a third to a half of the way through the cure cycle. It can then be heated up with the heat gun and applied. Once that cools a little bit though, you can then add another layer of the epoxy on top, heat it up a little bit more, and all those layers will blend together, but will build up much more quickly than epoxy used at the beginning of its cure cycle. So the benefit is that you can in one step take a part that's pretty much unusable due to the sharp edges and poor cosmetic finish and make it look quite nice and be completely usable. There's a consistent full gloss finish over the entire piece. If you attempt to do this with epoxy that's not partially cured, it will need to be done in multiple layers and take quite a bit longer. Plus this is completed with no sanding. Imperfections are simply filled in with a thickened partially cured epoxy. This mask was made using two layers of forged carbon fiber fabric. This is cut with a rotary cutter to the approximate size, placed into the mold, and then relief cuts are added to help it to conform to the shape of the mold since this is a complex shape and the fabric itself does not stretch, but when you add a relief cut, that seam will just disappear once the piece is cured. Two layers were taped in place into the mold to keep them from shifting around. And then the release cloth and breather cloth were added on top of that and then that was bagged up for vacuum infusion. The infusion was completed using that same deep set river table epoxy which works great for this process. The problem came due to this being completed in a very cold garage, so I was using a heater to heat the piece up, and some of the tacky tape softened a little bit too much, the plastic pulled away, and quite a bit of air got into the mold, so it could no longer hold a seal after that. I was unable to find the leak, and it was already towards the end of the infusion process. So to save the part and get at least some compression, I placed the entire mold after infusion into a separate vacuum bag, and vacuum out all the air to compress it as much as possible. That did help and it allowed the part to be at least close to usable, but with all that air that got in there and the loss of compression, the fabric wasn't properly pressed against the mold and that's where the issue came. The piece was released from the mold and after assessing the usability of the part, then the epoxy was used to fill in all of those imperfections. It was from the same batch, but the mold for this was placed into a heated area so that it cured much more quickly in about a day instead of three days. So then the leftover epoxy from the infusion was left to partially cure at room temperature. The benefit of this epoxy, other than just the convenience of being able to mix up just one product, not have to have separate products on hand, is that it's extremely clear, so you get a really nice cosmetic finish in that respect. It has a long cure time, which can be adjusted depending on how much heat you apply during the curing process. And it also can be used for closed mold applications or for coating, as in this case. So it's not gonna get any of that blushing, that discoloration or fogginess that some epoxies will get when they're cured in the open air. Also, because it is such a slow curing epoxy, there's no concerns of it overheating when it's in the pot if you leave it too long. And it also degas as well in a vacuum chamber. You can leave it as long as needed to ensure that as much air as possible is removed before proceeding with laminating or coating or infusion. So this was after just one coat and the finish is good enough. It's not perfect, a small bubble trapped on the side that can be cut off and then the area in the nose where the deepest imperfection was, that did sink in slightly as it was curing. And then there are also a few minor air bubbles trapped in various areas that aren't particularly noticeable. So if you were to spend more time do multiple layers, do some sanding, certainly you could improve that finish. But for a quick fix, for something that you just need to do as few steps as possible and get it to an acceptable level, this is a great way to go. The finished piece has a really nice high gloss finish that only took one extra step despite the issues during the infusion process. Any minor variations or imperfections that remain are at least not sharp and they really just blend into the organic shape of this piece. The back was finished by just adding a very thin coat of that same epoxy just to make it smoother since the texture of the peel ply is somewhat rough. 